Mr. Trouble never hangs around when he hears this mighty sound. Here I come to save the day. That means that Mighty Mouse is on the way. Yes, sir, when there is a wrong to right, Mighty Mouse will join the fight. On the sea or on the land, he gets the situation well in hand. So though we are in danger, we never despair, cause we know that where there's danger, he is there. He is there on the land, on the sea, in the air. We're not worrying at all, we're just listening for his call. Here I come to save the day, that means that Mighty Mouse is on the way. listening for his call here i come to save the day that means that mighty mouse is on the way eleven ish good morning how is everybody this morning i've not had enough coffee yet today Yes, I remembered to lock... Oh, lock the seat. I never locked the seat. It's good having Megan on the side in the chat room to remind me of things like I did forget. People would just... Then again, people would just ask requests instead of jumping on, I guess. But, um, yeah. Morning. How are we? It's uh, 11 o'clock Thursday morning. This is my little creative breakout, my creative tea coffee break. I have a steaming hot cock... Cup. <laughs> I have a steaming cock? No, I definitely don't have a steaming cock this morning. Wow. I have a steaming coffee this morning. Wow. Shit. I think I need this more than anything. One sec. <laughs> steaming cock. What would a steaming cock look like, though? No, I mean, like, why Why would somebody have a steaming cock? Would it be from, like, too much exercise or running? I think the only time I had something weird happen like that was when I was probably about 12 at school, running in really, really cold weather, and got back to the school, and it was like, my God, my cock's disappeared. Yeah, it shriveled up with the cold so much. It was like trying to escape the outside world. So yeah, never had a steaming cock. But I do have steaming hot coffee. And uh, it's dark as shit this morning. I literally put so much in there. You're actually considering this. I'm actually considering. You've got to sometimes, just got to go with those thought processes sometimes, Megan. Megan's sitting on the side dying. But uh, I'll leave it in the recording. Why not? Oh, Chloe, you just missed uh, you, you just list, missed 30 seconds of awesomeness. Uh, instead of uh, saying steaming hot coffee, I said steaming hot cock. Never mind. Right, all good. I mm. hope you got a drink. I hope you got some coffee or you got some tea. Um, that is a classic, classic 11-ish, and I'm leaving it in there. It just shows you how much I needed the coffee. Mm. Oh, my God, this is so strong. Whoa! You know, when you have a coffee, it just, like, blows your head off. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, I need that this morning. God damn it, I needed that this morning. All right, so a few things I want to get into today. I've got, like, uh, two solid days of recording to get done. Um, And just lately, just recently in the last week, I've been getting up really late. I've been getting up at sort of like half nine, ten o'clock, which is not like me at all. And I think it's because I'm just going to bed really early, like three, four o'clock in the morning, which is not really good for me. But um, yeah, I've been, as long as I get going by 12 o'clock and work through till like eight, nine, ten o'clock, and as long as I get some solid stuff done in there, it's not bad. I've been breaking up my week, though, by switching between my iMac and my laptop. Because my keyboard on my iMac is the ghettoest keyboard like in the universe. Look at this thing. It's like it's missing keys for God's sake. Like this has been through so much damage in the last two years. I should I have got another one, but the other one has got all the keys, but the space bar doesn't work, so I'm like screwed either way. 
I should just get another keyboard. I should get one like Chloe's, which is like this ghetto black keyboard. It's completely broken. A completely massive thing. Yeah, so this week, it's been really tough. And so as long as I start around 12 o'clock, it's pretty good. I swap between the iMac and the laptop because the laptop's got a really good keyboard in it. And uh, I've been working on Haiku decks. So each one of my sections for Udemy has got like a, a, a section at the beginning that sort of outlines what's going to happen in each section. It's kind of part of what Udemy asks you to do. And I don't know if you why I'm I don't know if you know why I'm pushing so hard to get my Udemy courses done, but they have an event every year in November, the start of November, called Black Friday. And Black Friday is like a an online mad day. In fact, it's probably like three or four days where people spend more money online. It's mainly an American thing rather than a European thing. Um, all the websites, all the American websites, all the big ones like Walmart and places like that, they do like online specials to coincide with their Black Friday event, where Black Friday is where I don't know if they normally don't... Is it? I was going to say, I don't think it's just online. I was about to say it's kind of uh, an event where they have sales because the sales are slow, and so they push things cheaper, and then they just have loads of manic like people rocking up and stuff. So there's kind of a knock-on effect that it's... The majority of people are just like, spend money, like spend money week. Uh, yeah, no, I've seen it in the supermarkets in the UK, but I don't think from a digital perspective it's so big in the UK in terms of Black Friday. So they do an event, Udemy do an event called uh, Black Friday, hashtag Black Friday 2015. And for people who are just setting up courses or just launching their courses for the first time, this is the time really to do it in November because... It's the way to get some traction and to maintain traction. They've got stats that prove that if you get your course, your paid courses into the search engine optimization elements, so you've got all your descriptions and everything done, they also Udemy help you with pushing your courses. So they do a lot of SEO for you as well in terms of promoting Black Friday in different places, Facebook, etc. So from most of the people I've talked to have been who've been on Udemy for the last 10 months who now do that as a full-time job, they literally don't work anywhere else. They just do Udemy courses all the time. This is the time to really start start going. If you can get around two or $300 a month from the Black Friday sales, then you can kind of maintain that. You get a bit of a jump in January, at the end of January, when people buy more courses because they want to learn something new in the new year. So that's kind of cool. Um, I'm working on that at the minute. That's taking up all my time. So I've got kind of two days solid to, to get as much of this course done as possible. And it's the biggest course I've done. The other courses have been 30, 40 lectures, and they've taken two days, two and a half, three days. This one's got 110 lectures in it. I mean, it's quite a big piece, but then I am sort of charging 100 quid for it. But then I'll probably do dis discount codes for Black Friday. So we'll see how it goes. I mean, I, w I will get a, an idea of how much effort and work I'm going to have to put into Udemy. I think it's going to be quite a lot for the next three or six months, but I feel like that's that's where I need to be. I need to have online assets that I can just promote. Even if I go and do temporary work, if I come out at lunchtime or I'm at work for like 15 minutes or half an hour, I can schedule things using Postcron. I don't know if people use Postcron. Another thing I'm going to drop in here today. It's a post and then C-R-O-N, Postcron. And it's a little bit like Buffer, but it's an e easy way to schedule posts on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Google+. Plus. So I think they've also supported Pinterest now. So you can use Facebook, Twitter, or Google to log in, but you can schedule like the common posts that you use. So I I commonly post things about Udemy courses. Like every couple of days, I, I make a graphic in Canva, and then I just schedule like a week or two weeks or a month's worth of, of posts. Now, a lot of people think that's a bit spammy, but for me, yeah, as long as you're not like, posting one every hour and it's the same graphic saying buy this buy this buy this i kind of find it a way of of getting that messaging out and i kind of do most of the time i do two i do one in the morning in the uk and i do one at, at, at uh, night time for the us people as well because tweets disappear like literally if you don't see it in 24 48 hours like the timeline just moves up and you never see it so postcron's pretty cool postcron.com go check that out you can schedule things in put watermarks over the stuff um what else was going to say uh, yeah, the Black Friday stuff. And then there's the eBay stuff. So yesterday I started making notes for my eBay stuff for sale. So we're putting together a uh, a funding thing for Friday. Uh, Friday night we're doing a 
get together, go fund me, like get together, gofundme.com forward slash humble NYC. We've already raised 200 quid, but we need to really push on it now. So I've put my GoPro Hero 3 uh, Black Edition up for sale. I've got my Canon 650D up for sale with a 40mm, 50mm, 85mm lens. And got my electric bike up for sale as well. So overall, I've probably got about 650, got about £1,000 worth of stuff put up. And I'm hoping for around that kind of amount. So somewhere like 850, 900 for all of that stuff. And then I'm going to put half of that money, so 500 quid of that money, into the fundraiser. And then I'm going to put the other half to the farm so that they're all paid up for, or at least a, a chunk paid up for the work that I'm doing for the farm. And then as soon as I finish this paid course, I'm thinking about going back to temp work just till like the end of November, just to bring in like another probably 500 to 1,000 because obviously going back to work is going to be quite a hit because I'll have to get food again, daily food so I can eat in the, at work, etc. But it'll be like a nine to five job is what I'm looking for. Some kind of menial, brainless job that I can just go into work at nine and just like smash it out, get to lunchtime, work on the work on my laptop in the car, in the car park probably, some random place. And then be ready for December. And then I kind of see December as time when I'm going to sit down with... Um, everybody and kind of map out what next year is going to look like or what i want next year to look at and i'll buy them by december time i'll have some stats in from the udemy so i have i'll have a rough idea of how well that's working out and if i get a if i get an inkling that it's going good and i, I manage to do all these bonus bits that's another thing i've told you about udemy sends you these little tasks to do and if you do these little tasks like a, you get plus 10 points for this and plus 25 points for that they pick 10 people that they extra promote so they like post your paid courses on their udemy facebook page which has got like thirty six thousand people on it and then there's also their twitter accounts and they put you higher up in the algorithm so you end up appearing on on the page a bit more on their site so for black friday especially there's lots of people who just go there for the offers and they pick like 10 courses that they want to take so i've got to make that course awesome and that's what i've been doing over the last couple of days i've been working on haikudeck.com and making different um, starting things. So for each section, it's sort of what is in this section. I'm going to bring it up now. By the way, I've got 929 students now in 90 countries, which is insane. Um, and they just I still get probably about 15, 20 people sign up every day, and I've not really pushed it as much as I could, really. I could like be pushing it every single day, but I'm, I've not been doing it. Uh, 121 sections on my lecture, which is crazy. Uh, yeah, the the good thing about having 900 people on there, on the two free courses, is that I can I can send a message to those people who are on those courses, tell them about the new course, give them a discount code, so may, maybe get a few of those people that way. Even if I just got like a hundred, ten percent roughly of the thousand people that are there, nearly. Uh, and offered it to them for like 25 quid you know that's still two and a half thousand pound if 100 people took it which is crazy so I kind of kind of feel confident about that i've also found a really good tutorial the other day about exporting my linkedin contacts i've got over 500 plus linkedin contacts probably 600 700 people so i found that you can export those contacts as a csv file i was going through um some udemy marketing tips and i found that you can export that and then i'll just go through that csv check out some of the email addresses of people that will definitely not be interested in it but some of the people that i've met over the last three or four years who who haven't heard from me for a while but be interested in you know the uh, brand advocacy stuff so i'm i'm pretty pretty hyped up in terms of know what i've got to do what else was going to talk about oh i was also going to talk about mixler so Mixler is like a completely different train of thought. This is, by the way, just let me check what how much time this is. So five minutes, got five more minutes. So Mixler, when we, when I did my first blab or second blab, I uh, found a great piece of software, web software called Mixler, where you stream audio to it. So you can like do a playlist and you can do a live streaming station online. I think it's mixlr.com. And I was trying it yesterday because I was moving all my music from my hard drive onto my laptop so that I can use that for live streaming and I couldn't get Mixler to work because because El, I've installed El Capitan which is the latest Mac OS X onto my laptop and my iMac for some reason the there's an there's an add-on bit called Soundflower 
and Soundflower allows you to route the audio so you can get the audio from different applications. So if you're playing your music through iTunes, you have to run this Soundflower app so it captures the audio. And it doesn't work under El Capitan, so I was, I was stressed out about that yesterday. So in true Phil Campbell fa fashion, I had to find a fix to it. And so I found a fix, and it's a thing called Screen Flick. It's an app to record the desktop on Mac. And when you install Screen Flick, there's an add-on in there to be able to capture audio as well. But it's ver it's a different version of Soundflower. It's like a newer version that you can't download anywhere from the web. I don't know if they made their own version or recompiled it for El Capitan. But if you install Screen Flick and go into the options, you can install Soundflower through there, and that works. And that allows you to capture it. So it's kind of a little bit of a hack and a workaround. I know that... Um, I know that uh, the guys from Mixler posted a blog post on the 1st of October about it, but I, I only found it yesterday. So I'm going to be doing some music, live music-y stuff on Friday night in our Blab. Do a search on blab.im forward slash Phil Campbell or hashtag Team Humble to find the Blab on Friday night. It's going to be 10 p.m. I can't really give you a schedule. I can't schedule you a Blab and give you the link because... There's an issue with the recording button at the moment. If you schedule a blab, it doesn't come up. You have to only just do a live one, do one like now, and that'll that'll come up. Uh, what else do I want to talk about? So finish off my Haiku slide, Haiku deck slides today. Um, I've got two long days ahead of me, so I'm pretty much going to be offline till probably tomorrow night because I really just need to get in front of the screen and get it done. Now I've done the Haiku deck. I'm going to record each of these sections. There's like 12 sections. So I'm going to be recording like the haiku deck behind me and then me in front in the bottom corner just talking through people what they can expect in each section. Then I've got to do some quizzes. The quiz is going to take up so much time. So that's kind of it really. Uh, what else do I want to talk about? Uh, the farm stuff. Kind of made a list of things for that in terms of setting up the SoundCloud account, setting up Uscan Me. I've got to design an A4 sheet with a QR code. I've got to make a little education guide on how to scan the QR code. I have to get software for Windows, uh, I iOS, and Android. Um, I've got to research open badges again, like digital badges for the kids that when they do certain sections in the petting zoo that they can claim their digital badges. And I've got to make that so easy so that they can issue them, otherwise they won't use it. And then I'm also, with the help of Dale, she's managed to put me a document together for geocaching so I'm going to be looking at the geocaching app as well. And I might even take a trip out on Saturday with Ella and try and find some local geocaches. I think that'll be a lot of fun. I think Ella will love that. And maybe record the behind the scenes of me and Ella like walking around looking for a geocache. So that'd be kind of cool. But don't weeks come really quickly? I can't believe it's Thursday. It's like it's just literally just caught up with me this week. Last Yesterday I was, I was hoping by Wednesday I would have like cracked a lot of stuff. But did not work this week this week just screwed me over big time and i can't afford it to be screwed over it's like 15th of october it only just turned october and you know the biggest scariest thing more than that is i went to get some milk yesterday some um it's not scary that i went to get some milk by the way i went to get some milk and some bread and walked into the shop and they've got christmas decorations and christmas gifts and crackers and shit like that it's like fucking october it's October. It's not December. Like, I understand you roll it out in November, maybe, at the second week, third week of November. Like, I, I just want to run away. I literally just want to run away. When I see, like, Christmassy stuff out, like, this early on, I'm like, I don't need to be thinking about that shit yet. I do, like, they've actually caused me real-world, real-life stress because I can physically see Christmas coming. And it's kind of like, get ready for Christmas. Make sure you've got Christmas. It's like, come on, come on like, get your money together. You've got to buy Christmas presents. You've got to get shit. So it's like, go fuck yourself. Like, literally retail, go fuck yourself. Like, I don't need that. I don't need additional mental health pressure. I've got enough as it is, thanks. It's like, I can't even compute it. And I, I'm literally having to walk through the shop like one of those horses that wears those kind of things over its eyes. I'm literally a blinkered shopper. I'm walking through the shop like, no, can't can't see the can't see the stuff can't see the christmasy presents and they look at me funny like, what's up with that guy don't want to do christmas yet it's october don't make me think about it i know it's coming but i just i'm not subscribing to christmas until november time anyway that's uh 20 minutes 19 to 59 20 minutes dead on 
Right, I'm going to finish recording now and then I'll jump into the chat a little bit with Megan and uh, 